Welcome to the fifth and final part of this multi-part guide series to EVE Online. In this video, I'm going to be covering basic ship fitting and using the popular EVE fitting tool, Pypha. If you missed any of the previous episodes in this series, you can click on the annotations on screen now to be taken to an earlier video. Fitting your ship in EVE Online is truly a monumental task for the new player. A quick Google search will tell you that in account from 2015, there were 4,277 modules in the game, with 4,322 active on the test server CC, with each of these components serving their own unique role in how your ship operates, you can see how the wealth of information can quickly become pretty overwhelming. I remember being completely and utterly lost the first time that I attempted to fit one of my ships. As someone who is completely brand new to the game, you just have no idea what you should be fitting or even what different parts and modules are called and where to find them. So how do we go about starting to fit ships in this game? Well, this is one of the things that I was actually really excited to start getting into when I first started playing EVE. Obviously, the idea of like designing your own spaceship putting different parts on it, putting different modules on it, uh, putting different weapon systems on the ship. You know, all of that sounds really exciting to a new player. Uh, so it was something that I did want to get into straight away. But like I mentioned, there are just so many different thousands of modules in the game. There's so many different ways of fitting a ship that for someone who like knows nothing about the game, when you do first try to actually fit something up, it quickly becomes pretty overwhelming. Uh, so we're going to hopefully go about and change a bit of that for you. Uh, so let's go over some of the basic principles for fitting ships in EVE Online. Uh, we're going to open up our cargo bay here. Now I've got a few different hull types here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to show info on this augury here. Uh, and once we get in here, we're going to go to the traits tab, which is already open for us here. Uh, and you can see the bonuses that this ship has. So the augura has bonuses to remote armor repairers and remote capacitor transmitters. So immediately you can see this is maybe a bit of a support ship. Uh, it is in fact an, a logistics ship. Uh, so remote armor repairers are basically for repairing ships other than your own, uh, hopefully members of your fleet rather than, uh, you know, people, enemy ships that you might encounter. Uh, so yeah, those are the bonuses for the augura there, and that can give you a bit of an idea about how to start fitting an augura. Uh, let's take a look now at the Astero here. Uh, and you can see the bonuses that we've got here. So we have 20% bonus to drone hit points per level for Galente, or Galente frigates. 4% uh, bonus per level to um, armor resistances for the Amar frigate skill. Uh, then we've got these roll bonuses here. We have a reduction to cloaking device CPU requirement. We have a buff to core and combat scanner probes and a buff to our relic and data analyzers. So immediately you can see, okay, we've got some combat bonuses here uh, and we've also got some exploration and scanning bonuses. So, you know, this ship could be used in a combat role. Uh, it could be used in an exploration role or, you know, maybe something that incorporates a bit of both. Uh, now, let's go and open up our last ship here, uh, our active ship. It is the Fed Navy Comet. And pretty simple here, you can just see we've got bonuses to a weapon system. This weapon system is small hybrid turrets. Uh, now, if you are a bit confused about what this bonus actually applies to, you can click on these icons here, uh, and that takes you to the information for the skill. Now we've got different tabs here like the description, so a brief description of the skill, uh, the attributes for the skill, 
the requirements to train the skill. So to train this, we only need gunnery level one. So pretty accessible. In fact, you know, most characters, or in fact, all characters, I believe, start with uh, small hybrid turrets already trained to at least like level two or three or something. Uh, but if we go to the required four tab here, this is what is probably most useful, I would say, to a new player, because you can see here, if we go to uh, level one of the skill, you can actually see all of the modules that you can fit if you have a particular level of that skill. So for level one, we can fit any of these turrets here, and that can be a good way for you to start finding modules that you can fit to the ship. Uh, because, you know, if you want to find, like, say, if you want to find this compressed coil gun here, you literally have to type 75mm compressed coil gun, or at least, like, compressed coil gun into, like, the market search for you to find this module. Uh, and, you know, obviously there's lots of different things that are called lots of different names, and you have to sort of remember all of that uh, to actually be able to find things. So, if your module knowledge is not very good, this is a way that you can start finding mods. Uh, let's just take a look at level 3 of the skill. You can see that that gives us access to medium hybrid turrets. Uh, and level 5 of the skill gives us access to the Tech 2 modules. Now, this is what you basically want to be aiming for if you want to be serious, I suppose, or regularly flying a ship that uses small hybrid turrets, you know, especially for a small turret. If it's a small turret, you really want to get it to level five before you start doing, uh, you know, too much with it, I guess, uh, especially in a PvP sense or a solo PvP sense even. Uh, yeah, but try and get try and get things to level five is what I'm saying, basically. Uh, let's go and open up our fitting window here. Uh, and... We are going to go and start fitting up this comet. Uh, and to do this, we are going to use one of the new features uh, that's coming to the Tranquility servers very soon. You can actually see I'm on the test server here. Uh, that's why I've got no character portrait on my uh, character sheet there. Uh, so let's enter simulation mode here. Uh, this is what is commonly being called ghost fitting. Uh, so maybe you've heard of that. Uh, and maybe by the time you watch this, it is actually a bona fide thing on the uh, Tranquility server. Uh, but clearly, you can see we're in the ghost fitting because we have like this ghosted outline of our comet here. Uh, we are going to open up the two modules on the side here. So this is like a stats thing here. We can see different stats for the ship and we'll see those changing as we go to fit this up. Uh, and here we have like a hardware section, so the different uh, mods that we can fit on the ship, also the different charges that we can fit on, so I've like already got the small charges open there already. Um, and then in the hulls and fits here, this is basically where all your saved fits are. So, you know, do I have a saved destroyer fit? Yeah, I've got like a, that's probably like a salvaging coercer or something. I don't know how to see it, but that's where all my uh, that's where all my save fits are. Let's go back to the hardware section here, and we're going to start fitting this ship up. Uh, now, let's talk about some of the basic principles for fitting ships in this game. Uh, and we're going to start with the high slots here. Now, high slots are generally used for modules that support the ship's primary function. Uh, so for our Fed Navy Comet here, this is where our small hybrid turrets are going to go. Uh, but if this was a mining barge, for example, uh, this is where our mining lasers would go. If this was the Augura, this is where our remote armor repairers would go. Uh, if this was the Astero here, this is where our cloak would go and also our scanner probes. So as I said, basically modules that support the ship's primary function. Uh, now, let's go ahead and try and find a turret to fit on our comet here. So we're going to open up turrets and bays. You will remember it was hybrid turrets that we get a bonus for, so we will open up the hybrid turrets. Uh, and we've got two choices here, blasters or rails. Uh, I'm going to go with blasters, you know, go with blasters every time. 
Uh, and small. We're going to open up small. That was the bonus. We had bonuses to small. And straight away I'm going to go to the Tech 2 stuff because I've got the skills for that. So I'm going to fit the Tech 2 Light Neutron Blasters here. So I'll double click on that. That will fit one. Double click again and that will fit two. Now that's all that I can actually fit on here because I only have two turret hard points. Even though I've got a third high slot here, I can't fit another turret in there because there's no space left on the hull for me to fit that. Uh, but potentially I could I could fit like a utility high in here. So maybe a Nosferatu, which is a module that uh, draws capacitor from the other ship and uh, adds it to your own. Or, you know, maybe an energy neutralizer. So I could uh, neutralize someone else's capacitor, perhaps. Uh, but we're going to leave that utility high empty for the moment. And we're going to move on to our mid slots here. Now, mid slots, you basically have three different options to go in your mid slots. Uh, modules that are used for offense or for attacking other players. Uh, modules that are used for defense uh, or utility modules. So like electronic warfare modules, maybe uh, data and relic analyzers. Maybe a survey scanner if it was a resource harvesting ship, uh, you know, so things along those lines. Uh, but for our comet here, we are going to go and fit, well, first off, we're going to fit some propulsion. So we're going to go into propulsion modules here, uh, and we're going to fit an afterburner on this, because uh, this is going to be used in factional warfare, so... Uh, the afterburner that I want is the Tech 2 1 Mega Newton afterburner. So I'll go ahead and fit that on. Uh, now, for the rest of the modules here, I've kind of shown you how you can find things by category. So the rest of the stuff, I'm just going to go by searching the uh, description for it. Um, and this is where module knowledge really does come into play because. Uh, um, you need to know the names for everything to actually be able to search for it, obviously. Uh, but we're going to fit the Enduring Warp Scrambler. Uh, then we're going to fit a web. Uh, so we're going to fit a Stasis Webifier, the Tech 2 Stasis Webifier. Uh, so this is going to allow us to shut off other people's micro warp drives. So hopefully catch them and uh, stop them from being able to get away. And it's also going to stop them from warping away if they have less than two points of warp core strength, basically from warp stabs. Uh, and then the web is going to reduce their velocity by 60% in fact. Uh, so there we have our mid slots. And basically our mid slots here are geared around attack, you could say. But at the same time, you know, these modules could be used for defense. You know, if I want to get away from someone, I could scram them and web them and then hopefully get out of range of their tackle and then warp away. Um, so, you know, it potentially can be used for either attack or defense. Now let's move on to our low slots here. Now, a general rule that we could say for modules that are gonna go in our low slots is going to be things to augment our ship's primary function. Uh, it's either going to be that or it's going to be an armor tank. And let me just talk about uh, tanking generally here. So as a general rule, you should only have a single form of tanking. So that might be shield tanking, armor tanking, or hull tanking. Uh, this rule can be broken slightly in some situations. Uh, and in fact, we're probably going to break that a little bit with this fit here. Um, but generally, you know, that's a good idea to keep in your head and, uh, you know, possibly stick to. <laughs> um, now, with shield tanking. So shield tanking, your modules, so your shield boosters or your shield extenders, are going to go in the mid slots here. Now, uh, what that's going to mean is you're going to have less room for utility and for tackle, for electronic warfare, all of that. Uh, you're definitely going to want a prop mod in pretty much every fit. So that's already one slot taken there. Then you have to add more, uh, you know, shield things in here for your tank. Uh, and that doesn't leave a lot of room for utility slash e-war. So keep that in mind for shield tanking. Uh, but you do generally, generally shield tank ships can move a lot faster. So a lot of kiting ships you will see being shield tanked.
then you move on to armor tanking. Armor tanking goes in the low slots, the modules for that. Uh, so if you choose an armor tank, generally you're going to have less, uh, like less damage or less mining yield if it's a if it's a mining barge. Like there's pretty much no mining barges that I can think of that have a genuine armor tank. Although you know I'm not an expert in fitting mining barges. Um, uh, but let's uh, and then and then you have so then you have hull tanking. So hull tanking uh, again, you can actually hull tank from the lows. Uh, but most people generally hull tank from the rigs. It does depend on the fit, though. Uh, yeah, but let's move on to filling up our low slots here. So we're looking for things to augment our ship's primary function. Uh, for that, I'm going to go for some magnetic field stabilizers. Uh, so I'll go and throw a couple of these in. And as I throw these in, you'll see I have loaded some antimatter into our guns here. You can see our DPS is currently at 150. If I chuck a mag stab in, we're at 180. I chuck another one in. We're at 220. So we're adding almost an extra 100 DPS there uh, to the Comet. So, you know, that's pretty damn useful for us. Uh, we'll then chuck in a damage control here. This will help a lot with our uh, with our hull tank that we're going to go for on the, uh, on the Comet here. And generally we'll add a bit more resists across the board. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to add a small ancillary armor repairer in here. Uh, this is like the most popular module for factional warfare. Really great module. We'll go and chuck that in. Uh, and then we'll jump across to the charges here. Uh, and you can see, you've got two little icons here for anything that you fitted on your ship that can fit a charge. Uh, and then you can like easily see, so if we jump across to the neutron blasters, you can easily see all the different ammo that this gun can fit. Uh, and then if we go and have a look at the armor repairer, you can see we can put nanite paste in that. So we will load up our paste into our repper there. Uh, jumping back to the modules, we will go and fill out our rig slots here. Now the Comet, it has three rig slots. Uh, we then have this calibration that you can see here. So a Comet has 400 calibration. Uh, each rig has like a certain cost for calibration and basically you can't go over this limit here. Uh, but that's not going to be a problem for us. The uh, bulkheads don't uh, use a lot of calibration. Uh, so we can choose Tech 1 here or Tech 2. We're going to go with Tech 2 because uh, hashtag no pause. And there we go, that's our uh, bulkheads thrown in there. I will actually just, so I'll take these out again, sorry, just to give you a look at the structure HP, so you can you might have seen our structure HP dropping there. It's currently at 900. Let's add a bulkhead. So 1100, 1400, and all the way up to 1830. So almost doubling our structure HP. So that gives us a really good hull tank on this comet. Uh, now the question is, is, is this a good fit? Well, I can tell you that this is a fit that's pretty standard. A lot of people in factional warfare who are flying comets are using this fit. Um, but if you're a new player and you're putting something together, it can be really difficult to know if your fit is any good. So I would suggest a way that you can start to maybe build a collection of fits and get an idea of the way things are being fit currently is going to be browsing the killboards for fits. Maybe you lose a fight to someone and you're impressed with how their fit performed. You can then go to their killboard and browse their losses and see how they fit things. This is actually a really great way of you getting fits and I know that I have certainly got a lot of great fits off of the killboards of the people that I have lost ships to. Of course, as a new player, it is still hard to know what's a good fit and what isn't but at least you're going to have a base to work from and you can start to experiment with different ideas and hopefully find something that works for you. All right, let's talk about using the e-fitting tool Pfeiffer. Now, if you want to go and grab Pfeiffer for yourself, uh, you can just jump over to Google, type in PYFA into Google, 
And uh, one of the top options there should be for the e-fitting tool Pfeiffer. Go and jump over to that website, grab the installer on there for your OS. So there'll be installers for Mac, for Linux, and of course for Windows as well. Uh, and then just follow the installation. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, but we will go and open up our Pyfer here now. So just clicking on this uh, Rifter icon here, that is our Pyfer. Uh, and you can see here I've got our Blaster Comet uh, that we fitted up in game. Uh, only this one has drones in the drone bay. Uh, that was something that I did forget to do. Uh, so if you have a drone bay, do make sure you put drones in it. And, uh, you know, maybe even launch them in a fight and use the extra DPS. Uh, that is also something that occasionally I've been known to forget about. Uh, but we're going to go over some of the basic things that we can do with Pyfer here. Now, I don't want to spend too long on this. Uh, we'll make it pretty short and sweet. Um, but... Uh, if you're someone who enjoys fitting and starts getting into this aspect of the game, uh, then Pyfer is something you're really going to get into. Uh, you know, there are people in EVE who literally spend more time on Pyfer than they do playing the actual game. Uh, now, this might seem a little bit strange to you, but, you know, basically, that's a bit of a compliment, I suppose, to how deep and rewarding the actual fitting system in this game is. Uh, but let's get started with some basic things here. Uh, so, for example, we can right-click on our guns here, and you can see that actually shows them in their overloaded state. Uh, we can do that for any active module here. Uh, and if you have a look over at our DPS here, you can see that's up to 247. Uh, and then left-clicking here, we'll turn that back to uh, just the active state. Uh, and I think maybe I might have actually forgotten to show this in game, but you can actually overload things uh, in game. I think by left clicking, and then the icon just turns red, and you can see that in the overloaded state. Uh, but here on Pyfer, right click to overload, left click will return it to the active state, left click again will show the module uh, uh, online, but not actually active. So if you weren't actually shooting someone, basically. Um, yeah, but. Uh, over in the right hand pane here now, you can see we've got stats here again. So pretty similar, pretty familiar with how it is in game. Uh, only there's a few extra things here that you don't have in game. So you might see a few differences in there. Uh, up here you can see we have a character active. So I have Captain Ace Rico here active uh, on my Pyfer. Uh, if you expand this list, you can see I've got some other characters here. Um, so you can actually create uh, like you can even create virtual characters here by opening up the character list here. Uh, so like here's some virtual characters I created earlier. So like this fresh character here. Um, you can see this fresh character has absolutely no skills whatsoever. Uh, but you could go and add like a specific skill set to this. So you could see what a character with a certain set of skills would be able to achieve or would be able to sit in what their skills would, what their like stats would be with certain fits. Uh, and you can do that just by going new character here, like this, and adding a new character in. Um, now, for characters, you can also, so let's say this was our main character, this character actually existed uh, on Eve. Uh, we could then create an API for that character. Uh, if you don't know how to create an API, just YouTube that or Google it or something. There's lots of guides on how to create APIs out there. Uh, but you could create an API, sync that up with your Pyfer, and then you just press this Fetch Skills button here, and that will sync your API key with your character in game. So, uh, so your skills are going to be exactly as they are in game. And uh, just every now and then you might need to return here and press the Fetch Skills button again if you've trained a few extra skills in game. Uh, but let's get out of here now. And again, on the left-hand pane here, you can see this is again pretty similar to what we have in game. We have some saved fits here. So this is where our saved fits are. We can search our saved fits. So let's have a look, see if we have like an Atron fit maybe. There we have a Blaster Atron. Uh, and then if we back out of here, you can browse... Uh, your fits by category as well. Uh, then you have this market pane here. This is basically the modules and the charges 
campaigns in game sort of wrapped into one. Uh, you have ammunition and charges here as well as all the equipment that you can fit on the ship. Uh, and of course you can browse these by category as well, similarly to in-game. Uh, and then of course you have search up the top there too. Um, but let's go and open up our browser window here. Uh, I do have a couple of fits over in the browser here that we are going to go and steal. Uh, the first one being Zoe Fishpants's uh, Fed Navy Comet. Now Zoe is one of the better frig pilots uh, in EVE, so hopefully her uh, Fed Navy Comet here is going to be a decent fit for us to steal. So let's go to export here and we're going to go down to this EFT icon. Now you're going to see this around pretty much anywhere on the internet where fits are posted uh, and if we open this up you can see this text here. Now this text is the EFT format uh, for this fit. Now what that is is basically a code that CCP has created uh, that the game will recognize. So if you copy this to your clipboard, you can then go and import this fit directly into game, just like that, uh, you know, a couple of clicks required, that's all. You don't have to actually go and find each individual module and fit it to a ship. Uh, so if we select all of this, go and copy, we can then uh, import this. We're going to import this one to Pyfer. So edit from clipboard. And there you see that imports Zoe Fishpants's Fed Navy Comet into Pyfer here and we could also go and do that in game which I will show you a bit later with uh, another fit. Uh, but you can see here Zoe is rocking some uh, rail guns on this uh, comet uh, so she's blaspheming a little here. Uh, we all know that real men fit blasters. Uh, she has got a utility high here as well so she's using a uh, uh, energy neutralizer here so maybe trying to uh, cap people out a little bit. Uh, then the rest of the fit, pretty similar to what we, um, what we had with our blaster, blaster comet, just using a bit of a longer range scram here. It looks like, uh, and if we look over in the uh, info pane here, you can see we are a little over on CPU uh, for this fit. Uh, that is probably because I'd say Zoe is probably using a Genopod, uh, either that or she's using like a really expensive. Um, CPU implant, uh, but most likely it's a Genopod. That would make a lot more sense there. Uh, but let's go back and grab another fit out of here. Uh, so we're going to go to the eUni wiki page. Uh, now, eUni is a really good resource for new players. Uh, so if you want to find some uh, some fits or just get a general idea of how to fit something, you know, you can even just go to Google type in uh, like any ship hull followed by the word fitting and more often than not the first option that comes up will be an EVE uni fit. Uh, then if we just go again to the EFT button here we can go and open up this fit and here we have the uh, text for it. So if we go this is a little bit harder to actually select we have to manually like select it all here so drag select that make sure you do get all of the text you need all of the text for it to import properly now we can copy that to our clipboard and edit that bring that in from our clipboard and there we have a newbie high exploration astero uh, so this gives you a bit of a rough idea just like generally how this could be fit kind of gives you a bit of a base to work from and you could then go and you know maybe tweak this as you see fit. Uh, now the last fitting we're going to go and grab here we're going to jump over to wolfpack.space uh, and then we're going to go to the doctrine fitting section of the website here. Uh, now wolfpack is a public fleets group that I am involved with and uh, these guys basically run some PVE isk making fleets uh, as well as the occasional low sec roam. Uh, so they do also use obviously the EFT format for their fits. You can see the, uh, the fit here. Uh, if we mouse over the little icon here, we can copy this to our clipboard just by clicking there. And then we can go and bring that again back into our Pfeiffer. And there you can see our Augura. Uh, you will remember we looked at the Augura earlier in game. It has bonuses to remote armor repairs and cap transmitters. Uh, so we have both of those fitted on here, obviously. Uh, 
We'll quickly go over some of the addition, additional options we have down here. So here you can see the ship's drone bay is displayed. There's currently no drones in there for some reason. We'll go and add some uh, some acolytes in there. Why not? Some uh, whoring drones so we can get on a kill or something. It's always nice for a Lodgy to get on a kill. Uh, in the next tab here, we have fighters. Uh, fighters are just basically really big drones that only... Uh, only capital ships and like titans or something can use. Uh, then we have our cargo here. You can see there's some stuff in the cargo. Uh, your cargo bay does export with EFT format, so that is excellent. Uh, then we have implants here. We can add an implant set in here. Basically the same way we did drones. We just look up an implant, go and add it in here, and then you can see what that would look like with this fit. Uh, boosters, again, same thing. Boosters are, well, boosters are basically drugs in game. Uh, which are actually now legal in high sec, so you can uh, you can buy them anywhere in the game, which is now good. Um, and again, same sort of thing. You can search for a drug in here, add it into your effects tab here, and see what how that changes your stats. Uh, then we have this projected effects tab here. Uh, this is like we can show an external effect being applied to our ship here. Uh, so something that's like not on the pilot. Uh, I guess. To do this, I can actually show with this auger here. This is a very good way of actually showing this. If I remove this cap transmitter, uh, you can see, if we have a look at our capacity here, you can see we only have 46 seconds of cap here. Now, obviously, if we only have 46 seconds of cap, we're not going to be a very effective logi. Uh, but if we go and drag this icon here for the auger, drag it into our projected effects tab, you can now see we have an auger here and Pyfer is simulating uh, me having a cap partner. So it's basically simulating another Augurer flying out next to me in space. He's locked me up. He's got his remote capacitor transmitter transmitting to me. And you can now see I am cap stable at 87%. Uh, so here, this is something you can do uh, with Pyfer that you can't really do in game. You can see if you can be cap stable in an Amar Logi chain. Uh, and for example, like we can show if I select Kaldari here, you can see that Kaldari only has a minute of cap. So Kaldari is definitely going to need to do a little bit more training before she can be an effective Amar Logi. Uh, but let's go back over to our game window here now, finally. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, import the clipboard that the fit that we have on our clipboard. So if we go to this import and export here, you can see we've got options here to import from clipboard. We can copy from clipboard. That would copy the fit that we have currently here. So if I wanted to uh, export this to Pyfar, or if I wanted to just export this to um, like notepad and, or something and send it, send it to a friend, send it in an email to a friend or something, I could do that as well. Uh, and you can also export from files. So you can save uh, a fit to a file. Uh, but let's import from clipboard and that will bring in our augura. Uh, you can see the game doesn't like mobile depots, so it's not letting me uh, import my mobile depot here, unfortunately. Um, but there we have our fit. That is all of our fit uh, there. We don't have to do anything else. Uh, we can then go and simulate this. So we can press the simulate button here. And there we go. There is our simulated augura. Uh, or we can also go, a very handy feature that's sort of recently come into EVE, like in the last six months maybe, uh, is this buy all feature. So we can click buy all if if we are in a trade hub where the stuff is actually available, um, which we are, we're in Jita. Uh, so if we could click buy all, we then get this single window here, which we can then go and buy all just in a single click, uh, and then go ahead and fit all uh, also in just a couple of clicks. This concludes my New Player Guides video series. I want to thank all of you who have watched and enjoyed these videos as it's your comments and engagement with the content that has driven me to complete these in the best way possible. I will be continuing with producing new player friendly Eve content and I already have some future videos planned. If you have questions about this video or about any other video in this series, you can get at me by leaving a comment here or by contacting Captain Ace Rico the next time that you're in New Eden.
I do hope that you will be able to join me for future videos on this channel. But until then, fly dangerous.